the hospital is within walking distance. As he said this, he actually went ahead and made Carla get out of the car. To my surprise, my mother-in-law just casually took the passenger seat while Kevin took the driver's seat. All right, that's how it is. I've made up with your dad, so we're going to enjoy a family trip to Hawaii. Just the three of us. They said and drove off just like that. What a shock. I was left speechless by the sudden turn of events unfolding before my eyes. I'm sorry. Carla apologized with a hoarse voice, snapping me back to reality. At that point, nothing else mattered, and I immediately called a taxi to take Carla to the hospital. That was all I could think about. And so, I was burning with a flame of anger, vowing never to forgive them. Little did Kevin and my mother-in-law know that I would take such bold action. I swore revenge on Kevin and my mother-in-law for neglecting their family. My name is Emma Reynolds. I am currently 42 years old and work as a nurse. My husband Kevin is 45 years old, just a regular office worker. Our daughter Carla just turned 10 and is a quiet child who always spends her time reading alone during breaks at home or school. Due to my job, I hardly had any interactions with the opposite gender. And I never even attended mixers because I was focused on building my career. Then, just after I turned 30, a friend insisted on not going to a matchmaking party alone because she was nervous. So I accompanied her despite having no interest. That's where I met Kevin. He laughed, saying he had been so focused on his work that he missed the chance to marry. I felt a strange sense of kinship with him, and before I knew it, we had exchanged contact information. Kevin turned out to be a very kind person, with a stable job and income. He showed understanding towards my irregular nursing hours, which undoubtedly drew me to him. Kevin felt the same way. I want to know more about you, Emma. I was really happy to hear that. So, we were drawn to each other and started dating with the intention of getting married. And I got married at the age of 31. I got pregnant with Carla almost immediately after we got married and gave birth at the age of 32. We both agreed that one child was enough, so we didn't try for more after that. Now, 10 years have passed. A dreadful menace was closing in on me. One day, Kevin suddenly said. My mom is going to stay with us from tomorrow. So, please take care of her. I was shocked by the sudden announcement of living together. And blurted out in a surprised voice. What do you mean? It's troubling to be told suddenly that your mother is coming to live with us. According to Kevin, there had been a fierce argument between his parents. And during the argument, his mother said, I'm leaving. And started packing her bags. Naturally, the only place for her to go was to her only son, Kevin. So, that's why his mother was suddenly coming to live with us. Honestly, I was against the idea of living with even my own parents, let alone in-laws. It's not like she needs care or anything. She's just running away from a fight with your father and coming here. Ignoring our circumstances. Can you rethink this? Kevin seemed very displeased with my response and retorted with a sullen face. Do you hate living with my mother that much? Huh, I never thought you were such a cold person. I couldn't say out loud how much I hated the idea. Kevin's expression was too intimidating, and I shrank back. Swallowing the words I wanted to say and glaring at him instead. Seeing that I couldn't talk back, Kevin smugly said. Humph, don't bother resisting from the start. Just prepare the room my mother will use right away. Firstly, since this house is a rental. We need permission from the landlord. Or the management company to increase the number of occupants. The lease is under my name because I receive a housing allowance. So naturally, I had to handle it. Moreover, our home is a two-room, used by Carla and our bedroom. Sorry, but we don't have any spare rooms available in the current situation. 
Then, Kevin casually suggested something shocking. Then, just move Carla out and have her study in the living room or something. That way, we can make sure she's doing her homework, and it's good for her. She's just a primary school student, after all. Luxury like having her own room isn't necessary. So, Carla will have to spend her time in the living room for a while. I was taken aback by such a terrible argument. How can you say such a thing? Are you prioritizing your mother over your own daughter? Huh? I didn't exactly say that. But, I do owe a lot to my mom for raising me. So, that's that. Despite my protests, Kevin remained unmoved. As soon as Carla came back, he told her. Your room will now be used by grandma. So, start packing your stuff right away. I rushed to stop him, but Carla said it was okay, and started moving her things to the living room. Watching her back, my heart ached, and I felt a growing hatred towards Kevin. Lately, Kevin has neither been doing household chores nor contributing much to our finances. And he's been coming home late. Considering Carla is only 10, I had been patient. But seeing his behavior today made me think it was time to draw the line. The next day, as expected, his mother arrived in the evening and exclaimed. Oh my, what is this filthy room? How can you expect to live like this, Kevin? Have you lost your mind? Her arrival coincided with our neighbor's return, and they looked at us suspiciously. So I quickly apologized. I contacted the property management company. And they said a short stay wouldn't require any special procedures, just a notification was enough. Truthfully, I hoped my mother-in-law would return home as soon as possible. Ideally within two weeks. However, my wish was quickly shattered. The large suitcase she brought made it clear she intended to stay for at least a month. Leaving me disheartened. She entered our home without a care for my feelings, inspecting everything. Upon opening the fridge and finding it nearly empty, she scolded. What is this? The fridge is practically empty. How do you expect Kevin and my granddaughter to get proper nutrition? Emma, you're really hopeless. I had planned to go shopping today. But her sudden arrival meant I had to clean up immediately after work, leaving no time for groceries. It seemed like ordering takeout was the only option. Lately, Kevin has preferred takeout over my cooking, complaining about it. So I've given up on trying to please him with homemade meals. Shall we order something for dinner tonight, mother? I asked with the biggest smile I could muster, but she snapped at me again. What? I won't allow takeout. A mother and wife who don't cook are worthless. Go shopping right now and prepare a main dish, five side dishes, soup, and dessert. After saying this, she threw a shopping bag and purse at me and slammed the door shut. Soon, I heard the TV blasting and her laughing loudly, leaving me sighing deeply. Unsure of how many times I've done so. An hour later, after shopping, I returned to find Carla doing her homework in the living room. With her grandmother watching over her like a hawk. If Carla made a mistake, her grandmother would loudly criticize. That's not right? Or, how can you not understand this? You're such a disappointment. Who did you inherit this from? I intervened to protect Carla. She just started learning this recently. Plus, schools now teach foreign languages and programming, even to elementary students. You can't judge by old standards. I stood up for Carla against my mother-in-law, but she, not taking any of my words into account, said, Sigh. If only she had taken after Kevin, who is smart. This comment was an indirect way of belittling both me and Carla. Carla looked downcast, so I immediately comforted her. It's okay, Carla. Just go at your own pace. I glared at her grandmother, but it had no effect. And she began to greedily eat snacks, ignoring my disapproval. 
A week after her arrival, I couldn't hold back my frustration any longer and confronted Kevin. I can't overlook this any longer. Please do something about your mother. It's one thing for me to be criticized, but it's unfair to Carla. Then, Kevin retorted with a displeased look and a strong tone. Huh? Why? You're in no position to act so high and mighty when you're getting help with the housework. It's Carla's fault for not being good at her studies, isn't it? She's the real victim here, taking after you who aren't exactly bright. That really got under my skin, and I couldn't hold back any longer. Normally, I would avoid the hassle and end the conversation there. But as a mother, my heart ached to hear Carla spoken of in such a manner. And then, in front of Kevin alone, his mother would put on an act. As I busied myself, she would approach me with a smile, saying. It's okay, Emma. Just sit down and have some coffee. I'll take care of everything. She pretended to be about to do the housework. However, she only showed the intention without actually doing anything. Leaving me to handle everything afterwards. Despite this reality, was Kevin blind? I confronted him, who was believed his mother was helping me. With the frustrations I had been holding back. So, it turns out your priority isn't Carla but your mother. How can you be okay, with your own child being unfairly criticized by your mother? I couldn't stand it if my own mother did that. To this, Kevin provocatively laughed. Ah. Uh. My mom is always right. Well, since Carla ended up like you, not a university graduate like me. It's no wonder she's not good at studies or sports. Poor thing. At that moment, I definitely felt it was the last straw. However, thinking it childish to lose my temper on impulse. I just laughed and replied, okay, I understand. A month later, Carla, who usually wakes up early even on weekends, was still wrapped up in her blanket, so I went to check on her. She complained of feeling sluggish. Remembering the recent outbreak of illness at her school, I suspected the worst and took her temperature, it was over 100 degrees. Panicked, I went to inform Kevin, only to find him getting ready to leave. I was stunned into silence as he casually mentioned. Oh. Yeah. I forgot to tell you, I'm going to Hawaii with my parents. I hadn't heard of such a plan before, but at that moment, it didn't matter. Normally, Kevin commutes by train, so the only car we have is mine. Ignoring Kevin, I tried to take Carla to the hospital, which is open even on weekends. When Kevin and his mother approached with their suitcases. Then, Kevin dropped a bombshell. The hospital is within walking distance. As he said this, he, unbelievably, took Carla out of the car. Shocked by the sudden turn of events. I watched as his mother calmly took the passenger seat and Kevin got behind the wheel. Then, that's settled. I've made up with my dad. So we're going to enjoy a family trip to Hawaii for three. He said, and they drove off. Stunned, I couldn't react until Carla, with a hoarse voice, apologized to me. At that moment, nothing else mattered except getting Carla to the hospital as fast as possible and I was filled with a burning rage. Kevin and his mother probably never imagined I would take such bold action. In my heart, I cursed them for neglecting their family. Two and a half hours later, my phone vibrated incessantly with Kevin's calls. Reluctantly, knowing ignoring him wouldn't change anything, I answered with a heavy sigh. Immediately, Kevin screamed for help without waiting for me to speak. Please help. Kevin had apparently caused a single vehicle accident on the way to the airport. My car has a manual transmission. Although Kevin has a license for it. He must have forgotten how to drive it due to his habitual train commuting. It was embarrassing for him to admit his lack of confidence in driving a manual in front of his mother. So he took the car anyway. Of course, I had made sure to have proper insurance. 
setting it up so that coverage extended even to a spouse, should Kevin decide to drive. Therefore, there was nothing illegal about Kevin driving the car. After all, despite my objections, Kevin took the car on his own accord. So any accident was entirely his fault. As I was contemplating this, Kevin blurted out. The accident happened, and now I'm running out of time for my flight. It's your car, so you deal with it. It's this hard to drive car's fault anyway. It guzzles gas like crazy, what's even good about this old junker? He started to complain, but it sounded nothing more than the whining of a sore loser to me. Having reached a point where I couldn't care less, I responded with a smile curling on my lips. So what? You knew my car was a manual, right? You decided to drive it without permission. The responsibility for an accident lies with the driver, not the owner. Oh, you hit a guardrail, right? Then, you'll be paying for the car's repair and the guardrail damages out of your own pocket. With that, I hung up. He continued to call, but I was in the hospital. Where Carla was being evaluated for something other than the suspected epidemic. Having no interest in dealing with such selfish people, I ignored the phone calls. Then, the sound of an email notification rang out. Assuming they switched to messaging because I wasn't answering the phone. I checked my smartphone, only to furrow my brows at the sender's name. I thought perhaps my in-laws had also sided with Kevin. But while my mother-in-law sent desperate pleas for help, my father-in-law's message simply read, What happened? Intrigued, I decided to reply only to my father-in-law. And that's when a surprising truth came to light. I learned he had no idea about any trip to Hawaii and had been enjoying his day with friends. His wife had called him about the accident, demanding he pick them up but refusing to provide details beyond just come. He had initially thought it was a prank for attention until Kevin also reached out for help. It seemed he was worried that Carla and I might also be involved and sent the email out of concern. Why did you respond only to me and not to the other two? When I called my father-in-law to ask this, his reply was unexpected. It's just a hunch. Besides, I'm currently separated from them. So just the thought of dealing with them based on recent events makes me not want to bother. Has my wife caused any trouble? He was unaware that his wife was staying with us. And seemed to think she was just causing trouble due to her whims. I took a deep breath and slowly explained the situation. Your wife is currently staying with us. Today, she said she was going on a family trip to Hawaii with you included, and they left. After sharing the ordeal, my father-in-law fell silent. After a long pause, he finally spoke in a voice lower than I had ever heard from him. That's unacceptable. Hearing a voice from him that I had never heard before. So low it seemed to crawl along the ground, sent shivers down my spine. After finishing a brief conversation with my father-in-law about 30 minutes later, I was finally called in by the doctor to learn about Carla's condition. It appears Carla has acute gastroenteritis. I was told she would need to be hospitalized for a while. Relieved, I sighed deeply but was also overcome with guilt. For the stress I had inadvertently caused Carla. We were fortunate to get a private room for her. Carla, how are you feeling? We got a private room, so you can rest comfortably. I tried to sound as cheerful as possible when speaking to Carla. But she looked guilt-ridden and apologized. I'm sorry. Because of me, mom had to go through so much. Now I'll fall behind in my studies too. I'm so sorry, so sorry. I rushed to her side and hugged her gently, reassuring her. Mom isn't raising you because you're good at studying. But because you're my precious child. Just be yourself, Carla. Later, my father-in-law called to say he had arrived at the hospital. Carla, who has always been close to her grandfather, was delighted. They started chatting happily about various things. 
including a painting contest Carla had won, which he had bragged about to his golf friends. Then, an unwelcome call came from Kevin and his mother. Because you didn't help us, we missed our flight. It's as if the whole trip cost went down the drain since we can't cancel. You owe us for three people's travel expenses. My mother-in-law joined in, wailing about missing a chance to reconcile with her husband. I was outside the hospital when they called. And their voices were so loud that it sounded like they were on speakerphone. Then, my father-in-law, who had followed me, said nonchalantly. Well, I wasn't invited to any Hawaii trip. There seems to be a third person involved, but who could it be? It's not Carla, Emma, or me. Who is it, I wonder? The realization that my father-in-law was present took Kevin and his mother by surprise. Making them uneasy. Why? Why is dad with Emma? I could almost see Kevin's pale face through the phone. I pointed out that they had lied and that my father-in-law had seen through their deception. Hence why he contacted me directly. Then, my mother-in-law started to make excuses. Well, it was a lie that we invited your father. This trip was just for the two of us. So, stop prying. It was as if she was begging to be doubted. To such an obvious lie from my mother-in-law, I managed to keep from laughing and retorted. No, no, what are you talking about? I just checked, and the reservation clearly states three people. At my words, the two fell silent, suddenly at a loss for words. Carla had told me that recently, while her grandmother was away, she had seen her snooping on my computer. Though she wasn't sure of the details, she mentioned that her grandmother had been searching for Hawaii trips. So, I logged into the travel booking site I use on a whim, searching for any clues, and there it was. My mother-in-law had booked for three people under my name without my knowledge. The payment had already been made with my credit card, which I realized after checking the statement. I was the one financially damaged, yet Kevin complained about cancellation fees which I thought was absurd. The fact that there were three reservations also served as evidence. So I asked who the third person was. Kevin continued to deny it. Uh, My mom must have made a mistake with the number of people. It was supposed to be just the two of us. Oh, is that so? Kevin seemed relieved at my response. Anyway, the trip is cancelled, right? Then, come to the location I'll tell you now. We'll discuss what to do next there. After saying that, I hung up. I left a message for Carla at the hospital and waited. At a nearby diner with my father-in-law for their arrival. When they showed up, Kevin, for some reason, started to complain. The cost of repairing the guardrail isn't covered by liability insurance. So sort it out with your insurance. I was flabbergasted by Kevin's claim. Excuse me? You're the one who hit it. It's your fault for being careless, so you should pay out of pocket. What are you talking about? As I glared at him, Kevin flinched and stepped back. Then, my mother-in-law spoke up. Never mind that. So, Emma, what did you want to talk about? Eager to get to the point, I somewhat appreciated her attempt to steer the conversation and said. Upon checking, the dash cam recorded not just you. My mother-in-law and Kevin in the driver's seat. But also an unknown young woman sitting in the back seat. Their faces tensed up at my words. The dash cam in my car is quite high-tech. Allowing me to check the footage in real-time via a smartphone app. Of course, I can access past footage instantly on my phone. The security measures I had taken for the car, in case of theft, paid off in an unexpected way, exposing Kevin's affair. Lying about going with your parents. And actually planning to bring your affair partner, huh? Thanks for leaving such clear evidence. Contrary to my smile, their faces turned pale. 
They probably thought removing the SD card would erase the evidence. I then revealed that I had been suspicious of Kevin's behavior and had been looking for evidence of his infidelity, ready to confront him with divorce once I had solid proof. My mother-in-law's stay and the trip to Hawaii, followed by Carla's fever, had delayed my plans. I had been considering divorce from Kevin all along. The two, now silent, listened as my usually quiet father-in-law spoke up. Like parent, like child, huh? Mom, you can't say much since you're also having an affair with a much younger man, right? Kevin was shocked, having been unaware, and looked at my mother-in-law. Her face turned red, exposed in front of others at the diner. At your age? Being deceived by a younger man and even bragging about being in love? What a joke. His deep-seated anger was evident. It turned out the reason for my mother-in-law's home escape was her own doing. Yet, she blamed my father-in-law, refusing to see her own faults. Disgusted, I looked at her with contempt. I have no intention of meddling in your affairs. However, Kevin, you will be divorcing me, and I will have custody of Carla. You'll pay child support and compensation, of course. And you'll be responsible for the car repair costs and the Hawaii trip expenses. Including those for your partner. The moment I said that, Kevin, without caring who might see, deeply apologized. All right, all right. I'll pay for everything. I'll even pay the compensation money that should be demanded from her. Just please, don't contact her. The reason he gave was astonishing. Apparently, Kevin's mistress is the daughter of an important client's company president. And she was completely unaware that Kevin was married. My mother-in-law liked the mistress because she came from a wealthy family and thought it would be nice to deepen the relationship by saying, let's go on a trip together, without any sign of remorse. The naive mistress took it seriously. And she even praised Kevin excessively for driving an old manual car. As confirmed by the dashcam footage. And, getting carried away by the praise, Kevin crashed into the guardrail due to his inattention. My father-in-law and I exchanged looks and couldn't help but smile wryly at such a ridiculous cause of the accident. They said they would handle the mistress themselves and just asked me to go back home for now. Which led to my contacting them. If it comes out that I've been dating the president's daughter under false pretenses. I'm definitely getting fired. Please, I'll do everything you say. Just don't tell her about us. We are husband and wife, after all. Can't you show some consideration for her in the end? I've been a supportive husband, I deserve at least that much. To Kevin's demeanor, I responded with a smirk. All right. Then I'll make sure you listen to everything I say. And please don't bother me with those pitiful apologies or pleas for help any longer. I won't be listening, okay? As if I'd make such a lame plea. All right, it's settled then. And so, our marriage came to an end with me demanding a certain amount for child support, among other things, closing the chapter on our marriage. But the real drama was yet to unfold. What do you mean? She found out about the affair. Sometime after our divorce, Kevin called me, his voice filled with anguish. I realized I had forgotten to block his number. As I pondered why I ever married such a person, Kevin continued to rant. This is the worst. The president wants to apologize to you and is furious with me. You broke your promise not to tell her, so give me back the money now. Listening to Kevin's voice. I wondered how I ended up with him and decided to reveal the truth he hadn't expected. You know I'm a car enthusiast, right? And the president of that company. He runs an auto parts manufacturing company, doesn't he? Actually, I've been a regular customer there. I had to bring in the car you crashed for repairs. Then, coincidentally, his daughter, your mistress, saw the car and screamed, exposing everything. 
get it? I didn't break any promise. Realizing the situation, Kevin groaned. His mistress was nobly working as an apprentice auto mechanic at her father's company. And to her shock, her boyfriend's car was brought in by an unknown woman for repairs. I simply explained the situation. My husband, no, my ex-husband crashed into a guardrail. And since the car is in my name, I brought it in for repairs. Upon understanding the whole situation, the mistress explained everything to her father. Leading to my company being informed. The mistress's father was furious. Questioning the upbringing that led his daughter to be involved with a married man. So, I'm going to lose everything. Kicked out of my home, broke. Disowned by my father, and left with my burdensome mom. And now I'm losing my job too. His complaints were the result of his own actions. If you had lived decently, none of this would have happened. It's all because of what you've done. Take care, and don't ever contact me again. After expressing my final thoughts, I ended the call and made sure to block Kevin. Severing any remaining ties with him. Later, when my car was repaired, I reluctantly learned about Kevin's fate. As expected, he was fired. Not just for the scandal, but also because it was revealed he had been embezzling company funds. If he returned the money, he could have been demoted as a disciplinary action. But Kevin, having already borrowed a large sum to pay me, had no such luxury. Thus, he ended up leaving the company without much ado. My mother-in-law continued to depend entirely on Kevin. Given her age and her 60s, it wasn't feasible to force her to work. And without any money, they had no choice but to take care of each other at home. Now, they're living in a cramped one-room apartment with a rent of $200. Barely scraping by together. After the divorce, the parents also split. And his mother agreed to his father's condition. Of not demanding compensation in exchange for not dividing any property. As a result, their life became extremely impoverished. Kevin, who had been trying to save money by eating bread and beans every day, couldn't take it anymore, and his mother ended up ordering luxury Italian for delivery, which led to a big fuss and police intervention. Eventually, his mother had to start working, taking up a part-time job at a convenience store a few days a week. It's sad that she has to work at her age, but in her case, it's a clear result of her own actions, so no one sympathized with her. On my end, life has been as usual even after divorcing Kevin. Since I was already covering most of the living expenses. And Carla and I continue to live in our home. There hasn't been any change in our living situation. Interestingly, Carla's grades have improved slightly since being freed from Kevin's nagging about her studies. Especially as she approached middle school, her art grades were excellent. And she expressed a desire to pursue a career in the arts. As a parent, I simply respect my child's choices. Even if it's a thorny path, as long as it doesn't lead her astray, I'm happy to let her follow her heart. Look, I came first in the contest again. That's my girl. You truly have a talent for art. Carla visits her grandfather in the facility, continuing to update him like this. Though he's no longer my father-in-law by law, we still keep in touch through Carla. I'm grateful to him for believing in me rather than his son or wife. I hope he lives a long and healthy life.